Hello and welcome back to Team Winger 5. Today we're going to be looking at how to underclock the Antminer S1. Now the S1, though absolutely brilliant and possibly the best Bitcoin miner ever made, I found was using quite a lot of electricity. I've seen reports on the internet that the user using about 360 watts. Mine was using closer to 400, but this is largely dependent on your power supply. But why would we want to underclock it? Surely that's less performance. And you're right. Well, here are the reasons. The reasons behind this is that the ASICs use a lot more power at this frequency. And in my tests, I actually clocked it at using under 50% when you lose 40 giga hash. So, and that seems like a good trade-off. Much less heat coming out of it, so you've got much less fan noise. In my view, it makes the miner much easier to handle and much easier to house. Now the first step, what you want to do, is measure the voltage across here. So the amp miner is on at the moment, and I'm just measuring the voltage across. You will need a multimeter if you want to do this. We're getting about 1.11 or 1.12 volts. And here is a handy chart I found on the Bitcoin Talk forums. I'll put the link in the video description. And now we want to locate a particular resistor. Now in this case, it is R3 for this section. And there's more resistors as we go along. R3, as you can see, is the bottom right hand corner just below the big chip at the top. Now the numbering changes across the board, but the placement stays the same. And the resistors you're going to modify are R3, R66, R38 and R52. And currently they're about 4.5 to 4.7 kilo ohms, as we're about to see here. Again, you will need a multimeter, so do not attempt this if you do not have a multimeter. So I'm getting about 4.45 to 4.47. And contrary to what I found when I was pencil modding the Red Fury, using a softer pencil is much easier for this Antminer S1 pencil mod. What you want to do is just put some more pencil graphite across the top of it and measure the resistance every time. Obviously blow the, the graphite off every time. And if you move my hand, you'll be able to see the new resistance of about 3 kilo ohms. If the resistance is too low, just wipe a bit of the graphite off. But if the resistance is too high, just add some more. It's quite easy to do. And you have four resistors to do on each side. So if you've got a dual blade Antminer S1, which I imagine all Antminers are now, you need to do eight. And here's my power results. I'm actually clocking at 187 watts, essentially. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's reduced it by more than half. And here's what the chip looks like once you've covered it in graphite. So we're looking at R66, and it's just much darker. And we can see the actual voltage across the chip has changed to 0.8. However, the hash rate is currently zero, because the current settings are looking for the old settings. So it's expecting the old voltage, and it's not going to work. So what we want to do is log into the Antminer, just to first have a quick look. That's just to make sure that it's working. But then what you want to do is SSH into the Antminer itself. So use the same IP address, but use a program called Putty. And the first thing you want to type in is CD ETC config. Then VI ASIC das freak, or ASIC if you're American. Now to use VI is not the easiest thing to do. And first you want to press I, and then what you want to do is comment out all the current settings. So all of these settings that already have a hash by them are commented out and what we want to do is comment out the current settings. Now I'll put this in the video description as well, I got this from the Bitcoin Talk forum and what you want to do is add these new lines to the bottom. You could alternatively modify some of the existing settings and uncomment them but here's what you've got to do. Just write out all of these and we just put new settings in for the Antminer. All we're doing here is adding a new lines in to tell it to use less hash rates. Then what you want to do is save in VI, which is not the easiest thing to do. Again, if you've got no experience, here's what you need to do. Press escape, ZZ type, then colon Q exclamation mark. Reboot the Antminer, so turn it off and on, simple as that. And this is it. Your ant miner is now hashing at around about 140 giga hash instead of 180 giga hash, but it's being a lot more efficient. Now, maybe I used a little bit too much graphite. The error rate did go up, but nothing significant, nothing like any of the other miners you'll see. Now, on the top, you'll see the old settings. On the bottom, here's the new settings. The bottom is using less than half the power, producing nowhere near as much heat, and is much quieter. All we've done is lost 40 giga hash. 
but with the spare power I've got here, I could add another Antminer S1 underclocked. I would still be using less power, and I would have almost twice the hash. So I think that's a pretty good deal, and a pretty good reasoning for underclocking your Antminer S1. Thanks for watching everyone.